I'm CK. Tonight we've got a little digital hourglass kit from GeekFun. I've had some good kits from GeekFun and I've had some so-so kits from GeekFun. We'll see what this one looks like. Hope you enjoy the video. So here's the bag. GeekFun Electronic Hourglass Board Blu-ray EK1886 out of China of course and their motto Give I kit, give one kit, find you new life, making dreams, passing happiness. Which is very positive. Let's see what we got. And GigFun usually has some good instructions, so let's see what we have here. Ooh, look at that. Nice big schematic. So you can learn what's going on. Then pictures for everything that you're going to be putting on, including some close-ups as appropriate. So it all looks pretty good. Now let's look at the bits themselves. A, a USB power cable. Another bag with the actual parts in them. Since we have a whole bunch of LEDs, of course we have a whole bunch of resistors to control the current going to them. That's a lot of resistors to solder. Resistor time is going to go on for a long time today. Then another one. Oh, the board is in two pieces. Huh, I did not know that. So here's where all the LEDs go, of course. Looks like we're going to have some pin headers to connect them. And here's the electronics side. And uh, all the values are marked. These are all 3.3K resistors, except for the 1 meg, this, this one here. Uh, LEDs, capacitors. Two uh, 4015s and one 4069. I'll look them up in a minute here. I'm not familiar with those numbers. So I believe we're going to stack it like that when we're done. Here's all the LEDs. And here are the pin headers and the ICs. We don't have any sockets for the ICs. We're going to be soldering them directly to the board and as you may be able to see some of the pins are a little bent which is not surprising because they're just thrown into the bag. Uh, one trimmer which adjusts the speed, one power switch, one electrolytic cap for buffering something, I don't know what, and one disc cap a 222, and then the pin headers themselves, which uh, I guess we're going to use, they didn't want to use just one large one, they wanted to use two smaller ones. Okay, fine. So that's what's in the kit, obviously. The solder practice part comes in putting all these resistors in and putting all the LEDs in. Of course, uh, the most critical part with the LEDs is making sure you get the polarity right on all of them. And since there's a lot, you got to stay focused. So I'll get the soldering iron heated up and I'll look up uh, the data sheets on these ICs and be back in a minute. <clears throat> okay, so the Chips are two uh, inverter chips and one uh, quad switch chip. Now one thing I did not see when we first uh, took a look at all parts, this is a directional switch which will uh, sense when we're holding the hourglass this way or this way. 
so that will be fun. And now we're going to put all the resistors on. Let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 32, 33, and 1. So 34 resistors are going to go on. So it's resistor time, and that means I'm going to speed up playback and not have any commentary because there's not a lot to say about resistor time. The one thing I will say, uh, one thing GeekFun does is they have some really good, they use really good PCBs. These are through-hole plated. The uh, traces are really good. The silk screening is really good. So that's a real plus for them. So I'm going to go into fast playback and put these 30 some odd resistors on the board. Enjoy watching resistors go on the board really fast. And resistor time's over. Two little things. You may have seen me glance at the data sheet a couple of times, or instruction guide a couple of times. This resistor here is marked as a 2.2K. Everything else is 3.3 except for this one meg. Uh, and I looked and it's just a misprint on the silk screen. I don't know how they did that, but uh, there are no 2.2K, they're all 3.3s. So let's see, what do we want to do next? We want to do the little 2.2K which goes right here. Then we're going to do the electrolytic, which goes right here. Oh, that's not the electrolytic, that's the switch. This is the electrolytic. Long lead goes in the positive hole on the circuit board. Now this is uh, the switch. And hold on, let me solder these two caps and then we'll do the switch. I haven't done one of these switches before. Oh, I'm sorry, we also came up with an extra resistor, one that's not used. That's somewhat typical on kits I get out of China. There's usually an extra resistor or two. If it's an LED based kit, there's usually an extra LED or two in the bag. So don't be surprised if you get some extras. Just when you see them, double check your board and make sure you haven't left anything out. Now let's see how this goes. So the switch goes here, and we're going to bend it 90 degrees. The only thing I'm at all concerned about is the lead legs are different lengths, indicating that there's probably a bias, a uh, polarity. This lead is thin, this lead is very thick. Though on the circuit board here, let me zoom in a little bit. If you look right here, this is where the switch goes. Those are the two holes for the terminals. You'll notice here there's one circle. I'm going to make a assumption with absolutely no data that that's where the thicker lead goes. But again, I'm kind of guessing. I'm, well, I'd, I'd say I'm intelli-guessing. Intelli I'm guessing with a little bit of intelligence. Now, we're going to want to bend this 90 degrees so it lays flat on the board, or else it can't sense which direction you're going to be. So we'll set that down. Make 
sure it's 90 degrees and reasonably straight. Yeah, that looks good. I hope it doesn't interfere with that chip. I don't think it will, but we'll see. Next on the back, we're going to put the trimmer resistor and the power switch since again these are going to be sandwiched like this so if we didn't put the trimmer on and the switch on the back we couldn't obviously control them so the trimmer is easy orientation you can't put it in wrong well I'm sorry it would be extremely difficult to put it in wrong I used to teach airplane systems and servicing way, way back, and I learned that, oh yeah, people can figure out a way to do things wrong, even if you think it's impossible for it to be done wrong. Now, uh, you notice I kind of loosely just soldered one pin on the switch. What I'm going to do is to make sure it's perpendicular and flat is I'm going to melt that solder and push on the switch and let the solder cool and now I know it's flat on the board. Uh, you'll see me do that with the pin headers when we get to that also. Just an easy way to make sure you're flat on the board and perpendicular without stressing about it. Because if you try and fight it, uh, then you'll just be, you'll get frustrated and you'll do something wrong in the end. And your product, your project won't come out well. So that's those things. Now we're going to put the ICs on. And they do go, this is the 4069, and the 4069 goes here, notches here, notch there on the silk screen. Let's see if I'm going to have to bend the pins. Oh man, these pins are snaggly on here. They came to us all bent. Okay. Here we go. Now one little bit of kit I have for this kind of thing is I have locking tweezers and what I do is I slide them in like that and I'm gripping the IC and the back of the board so the IC is held flat against actually it's not in this case because that switch is keeping me out. Okay there we go. Now, it's holding the IC flat on the board, not going anywhere, and I can solder it easily. Usually you do this with the uh, IC socket, but since they're not asking for any sockets on here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack two legs down, take that off, and then do the rest. Now we'll do the other two ICs, same way. And now we'll do the pin header connectors. And we do the uh, female ones on this side of the board, and or this, this board. And I'll show you what I meant before about how to get these flat and aligned right. Just get one leg done. And you can see, maybe, hopefully, there's a, it's gapped a little bit and it's turned a little bit that way. However, if I press on it with my thumb and heat that leg up, 
goes flat and it's perpendicular. Really easy. It's easier than other ways of trying to chase it to get it to be correct. four on and then we'll solder all the legs. And that's that board. Now we can go on to the LED board. Now we're going to do the other part, the other half. Now that we've got this all done, we're going to do all the LEDs And again, there's a whole bunch of them. This has got a blue dot on it. Interesting. I wonder if these are blue LEDs and not the red LEDs the instructions show. I don't much care one way or the other. Let me actually see what color these are. And if you want, ever want to check an LED for what color it is. Uh, just grab your meter, put it on the continuity setting, your digital voltmeter, put it on the con continuity setting, the one that makes a little beep. Oops. Makes a little beep when there's continuity. That's putting a little bit of a charge through the probes. So if you put them on the positive and negative lead of an LED, except this is not, I'm not getting it right. Got to spread the leads out a little bit. Put it on the positive and negative leads, it'll light up and show you what color it is. So that's blue. So since it is just a whole bunch of LEDs going in, I'm not going to have any commentary on that, so I'll go into fast replay as I solder these all in. All the LEDs are on, and you might have noticed I do the same thing with the LEDs that I did with the pin headers to make sure they're all flush and flat on the board. I soldered one leg and then reheated that solder with my thumb pressing firmly against the LED. It seated, it went firm up against the board. I took the iron away, let the solder cool a little bit, just a second or two, and then it's all set. Now we're going to do what we did with the male pin headers, with the female pin headers. And again, it's the, it's the same, it's the same procedure. We're going to put pin header in like that and without worrying how it's oriented or anything like that we're just going to solder one leg and in this case it came out pretty perpendicular and flush but uh, if not you just do the same thing heat that one leg press it firmly against the board with your thumb or other finger and then it's going to be all perpendicular and flat and and I'm actually going to do the other end here first because then it'll kind of stand on its own. And that's all the pin headers. Now the next thing to do is, I didn't do this before, did he actually make a step for it? He did not. Uh, we're going to put the power cord in and it'll go on this board in these holes but I'm thinking about this and I may do something else here uh, let me look up in my collection of stuff so I'm not going to run this by uh, USB power I'm going to put three LEDs in it 
I mean three uh, AAA batteries in it because that'll give us four and a half volts. It should be fine to power this. It shouldn't need the full five volts, right? Right. Oh, actually it says DC four to five volts on the back, so three AAAs will be just dandy. I'm trying to use up all the little scraps of solder. I keep them around because if you go through as much solder as I do, you don't want to waste it if you don't have to. That's in. That's in. Now let me grab some batteries. So before I grab the batteries, let's put this thing together. Now I guess it doesn't matter much which is up and which is down. But there is a B here and a B here and an A here and an A here. So I'll go with that and we'll align all the pins in the sockets like so. And it goes right together like that. So that's what we end up with. That's the front, side, back, side, top, and bottom. On off switch, this adjusts the speed so we can calibrate it to be to run uh, hourglass like at a certain rate. And we'll see what that looks like. As you may have noticed, I double checked to make sure that the power switch was out or off so it doesn't turn on right away when I put the batteries in. Now I'm going to turn it on. See what I'm going to turn this light off. I will turn it on and it flashes a little bit. As if sand is running down I guess even though the pattern is kind of unusual. You can see there's one grain left and it'll cross. There we go. Now let's flip it over. And there's our one grain coming down, two grains. Of course the main thing that interests me right now is the fact that I did actually put all the LEDs in the correct way. That's pretty unusual. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to turn the soldering iron off because we're done with soldering. Now I'm going to time this. So that was about 36 seconds. Now I'm going to adjust the potentiometer on the back and I'm going to be turning it fully counterclockwise, lowering the resistance. What do you think it's going to do? We'll see. Flip it over again and there we go. So it's 36 seconds and only halfway through, which makes sense. Now I'm going to not wait for this to complete because it's boring. Uh, I'm going to turn it all the way clockwise. And we'll see how much faster it goes that way. Maybe, let's say 15 seconds. You going to bet, bet on it with me? Oop. You got to watch out. You, you don't want to touch the uh, contacts in the back because you'll send it spurious signals. Okay, let's reset that. And we'll start. Oh no, not 15 seconds. That was three seconds. I went very fast. So you can adjust that trim pot to set it up for whatever you want to time it for. You'll get a feel for it if you use it more than once or twice, I'm sure. Let's see if we go back to 
If we go back to the middle and go a little bit clockwise, I think I can get it closer to 30 seconds. Because that's kind of what I'm thinking I want. A little 30 second timer. Perfect. Within half a second or so. If I go a tiny bit more, I'm sure it'll be just at 30 seconds. So that's it. A little hourglass just for fun and good practice soldering. Again, the, all the resistors are the same value, so that except for the one, one meg one. It's a pretty easy assembly, even though there's a lot, but a new builder will have fun with that, I think. It's a lot of good experience. It works well. The other thing that really helps this along the way is uh, the circuit board quality is really high, so soldering is really easy and really definitive. It's, it's a nice uh, board. So it's a good kit from Geekfun, and it's a uh, WEQ kit. I've made a couple of those. Uh, my digital clock that I use in here is from uh, them. So is, I think this one is too. So are a couple other things. They're, they're in general good kits. So there it is. Hope you enjoyed watching the video.